Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. George Lundberg and this is at large at Medscape. How's your magnesium? I'll bet you don't even know. You may not think much about it. How about your various patients' magnesium? If you think calcium metabolism in health and disease is complicated, and I do, you ain't seen nothing yet. Try magnesium. With calcium, serum levels give you a pretty good idea as to whether the body has enough. With magnesium, not so well. Approximately 99% of total body magnesium is located in bone, muscles, and soft tissues. 1% is extracellular. Thus, plasma or serum magnesium levels are only a rough approximation of adequacies of magnesium. Substantial hypomagnesemia does indicate magnesium deficiency, but normal blood levels cannot be dependent upon to exclude significant depletion of magnesium stores. We manage what we measure. If we cannot reliably measure some metabolic substance, we have far less chance to sensibly understand and manage it. Magnesium is an essential mineral vitally involved in more than 300 regulatory enzyme systems controlling muscle, nerve, bone, protein, DNA, glucose, and energy metabolism. A really big deal. The recommended daily intakes of magnesium vary by age and gender, but 400 milligrams is a good round number for adults. The kidneys provide homeostasis, typically excreting 120 milligrams per day. It has been known since the 1960s that consumption of alcohol, even in modest amounts, can double or even quadruple the excretion of magnesium. Many OTC and prescription drugs like proton pump inhibitors can lower body magnesium. Magnesium deficiency has been blamed for various arrhythmias, hypertension, ADHD, anxiety, seizures, leg cramps, restless leg syndrome kidney stones, myocardial infarction, headaches, premenstrual syndrome, fibromyalgia, chest pain, osteoporosis, altitude sickness, diabetes, fatigue, weakness, and other maladies. Whoa, really? That's almost everything. Can that be true? Because of the vital nature of magnesium in so many cellular functions, it actually could be true. We just don't know. Calcium and magnesium interact in innumerable ways. Magnesium is considered the calming mineral. There has been no large systematic study of the adequacy of magnesium body stores in Americans. In 2009, the WHO published a report that stated that 75% of Americans consume less magnesium than needed. Some say that we have a nationwide magnesium deficiency. Certainly those named illnesses are common. Obviously, the NIH or CDC should fund serious work to ascertain the status of American magnesium body stores, and I call upon them to do so. For most of my professional life, I have supported the adequacy of a balanced diet and opposed the addition of nutritional supplements as unnecessary, wasteful, possibly harmful, and mostly a scam. But as a typical American diet has evolved into one of fast foods and processed foods, my attitude has changed. Foods with high magnesium content include dark leafy greens, especially kale, chard, and spinach, tree nuts and peanuts, seeds, oily fish, beans, lentils, legumes, whole grains, avocado, yogurt, bananas, dried fruit, dark chocolate, and molasses. Supplemental magnesium is available OTC in many forms, citrate, amino acid chelate, chloride, glycinate, malate, taurate, carbonate, and others. They vary in absorption, concentration, and bioavailability. Since you can't just draw a blood sample and ask the lab to tell you, if a patient has any of the symptoms I listed, you might best just try that old standby trial of therapy and track what happened. 
Since I got interested in this topic a couple of years ago, I have emphasized the inclusion of magnesium-rich foods in my diet. Since I like to drink wine and I take occasional proton pump inhibitors, I take an additional 400 milligrams of magnesium daily plus my balanced diet. I feel terrific, better than before magnesium. I know that's subjective as all hell, but what better way would you like your patients to feel than terrific? That's my opinion. I'm Dr. George Lundberg at large at Medscape.